Hi, welcome to Infusion, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. self Paul Power Man. And I'm here with my co-host and significant other, Rach. Hey, people. And today we got a special show. We got um, a kind of a family podcast today. We got our oldest daughter, uh, one of our oldest daughters, Zoe Johnson, and, one, and our oldest son, Denzel Johnson. So, Zoe, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? And Denzel, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And Rach, um, we got a special show. We're, gonna, we're talking about something that's very sensitive, but also something that's, um, that, sh- that needs to be talked about with uh, Pride Festival coming up. So, Rach, what are we talking about? Take it away. So, yeah, with Pride Festival coming up, we are going to be talking about the LGBT community, and we're going to be talking through the decades. Um, with Ellie Krug coming up um, in just a couple days, we've got her, um, and we will have her on the podcast in okay. just two days. Okay, Ellie Krug. Who, who is Ellie Krug? So, so she's um, a transgender on AM Talk Radio. So you got her for, mm, to talk for with us. AM uh, Ellie Krug hosts a show called Ellie 2.0. I think it's on Saturdays at 10 or 11. You can check AM 950 AM um, on the web and find out when her show is. But she talks about um, exclusivity and um, being exclusivity and being a transgender person and work. And she also does classes. She also teaches uh, classes and goals and talks on the subject of the, um, of transgender people, and she uh, will be coming on our show, and we can't wait to have her. Just two days. So, um, you guys, um, today is Tuesday, and she will be on our podcast in two days, Thursday. So, anyways, going on, we got our two kids here. We are going to be talking about LGBTQ um, and through the decades. We're going to start with Philadelphia, the movie. Now, Philadelphia, that's with Tom Hanks and Antonio Banderas, and we all know the um, song, uh, The Streets of Philadelphia, by uh, Bruce Springsteen. Yes, you're very right. Sorry about that. So, um, yes. So at that time, everybody was um, in the world was worried about AIDS. It was starting to come out. Everybody was scared about it. Okay, okay. Let me, okay. Philadelphia is about a lawyer. Yes. Um, Tom Hanks plays a lawyer. And what happens is that he uh, contracts AIDS and he contracts AIDS. He loses his job. Nobody will take the case. And he finds this one lawyer. Um, not, I mean, he's not really a big, rich, you know, expensive lawyer or anything like that. But he finds this lawyer to take the case. And the lawyer is played by Denzel Washington. Yes, you're right. So um, continuing on um, at that time, I um, in the world, people were worried about AIDS. Um, people wouldn't even give each other hugs. It yeah, was yeah. like a plague. Yeah, we, we didn't know then what we know now. Exactly. Um, it took um, uh, Michael um, Magic to come out um, and really shine a light on um, the community with AIDS to um, really say, you know, it, it's not as fearful as it is, you, you know. Right. And um, people started um, looking at it of a different light. And um, then people started looking at um, the LGBTQ um, community in a different light. And um, even today, um, 2021, people are still um, looking at the community not as bad as back then, but there's still problems. And that's why we brought our kids on to the podcast today. Okay. And um, Zoe, uh, what uh, what do you have to say about this subject? Um, as being like a, like by. Um, okay. Okay. You say you're bi. Yes. And how old are you? I am 17. 17. And when, when did you, I mean, because most girls I knew at 17, um, <laughs> let's just say i was trying to do boy things but anything <laughs> anyways um how did you know and when did when did you when did you when did you come to grips or when did when did you find out that you that you may be like that and you may be bi or um it happened in eighth grade when i was at school and i just really found myself falling for this girl like it and it was kind of weird because i i've never looked at girls that way because uh-huh. i was kind of raised and nothing to, like, against my family. I love my family, and they're really supportive to the LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I, I found it as, like, a wrong thing to do. Like, if I ended up falling with, in love, or if I ended up going, like, in a relationship, I was going to be, you know, the Christian way of 
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I'd have to say because of the church we were in at the time, yeah. which which was, um, we were um coming off of um, excuse me, Jehovah Witness going into uncongregationalist. We weren't quite yet in Science of Mind. Okay, yeah. you weren't okay. Well, new th- well, it's science new of thought. Th- yes, science Science of Mind is a book by uh, um, <laughs> Ernest Holmes, and he um. That's one of the books that we use um, in in our church uh, centers for spiritual living in Minneapolis, and we teach from the science of mind. But the name of the religion is is the New Thought religion. Um, Oprah's kind of dabbled in it. Uh, Michael Beckwith, um, Barbara Marks Hubbard, a lot of uh, also um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who also um, was a big big, and um, Phineas Quimby, who was also a big big supporter and a big big pusher of this of the New Thought movement. So yeah, back to you, Zoe. Um, just. Because we were studying those religions at that time, I think probably kind of like craved what, you know, created what you were feeling at that time. Not really your family sources because your aunt is, has married a woman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, your aunt's married a woman. Your, um, cousin is married a guy. Um, Rachel's cousin is, um, him and (laughs) the, the two are, they're gay and they just adopted a son. And her sister. No, he didn't adopt a son. They had a son. They had a son. They had a son. I guess they had a son through a surrogate. I'm absolutely yes. <laughs> I should be more connected with my own family. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, you're 17, and you say you're bi. Okay. Um, and again, not, there's nothing wrong with that. But how is it? How is it being like that in high school nowadays? Because I'm, I'm, you got to look at me. Okay, <laughs> I'm a straight man. But back in the day, if you if you play, well, we call it play for the other team or whatever. But if you were gay back in the day, because we had to we had to take showers at, at gym, and it, you know, let's just say you kept it hush hush because you you know you might get beat up or something like that, and you you didn't bring that up. But I noticed that a lot more, um, and I see it a lot more in high schools and stuff like that. That a lot of kids are are this way, and it's, it's a lot more accepting than when, you know, like I said, back in my day, you get beat up, but yeah. it's a lot more accepting now than it was you know, back in my day, back in the 80s. So um, what's actually weird is um, I met this girl at a, um, what do you, I forgot what it's called, but they had this kind of com- like community at school for wins at like, I think it was the end of win or like any win. And um, we would just support LGBTQ, other cultures, and so on and so forth. And um, like... I feel like people can be very open at school, but I also, like, I've never had it, but people can still be offensive, and, oh, actually, it wasn't me, but I was in ceramics, and this girl that I know, and I won't tell your name for confidential reasons, but these two boys were throwing around, like, really offensive slurs to the LGBTQ community, and, um... Like she's like a supporter of that community, so I can't speak for her. But like after hearing what she she had just gone through about like hearing those kind of things, it, like my heart literally broke because it's still around. But yeah, I feel like it might just be more quiet. Well, I don't know about quiet, but you know. Um... It's not as hurtful as it was back then. I think there's movies like Love, Simon that are helping it become um, that it's not okay, right? That it's bullying. Yeah, but I would still say the words do hurt. Oh, oh, I never said that it didn't hurt. Um, and but what I'm saying is that there's sh- like m- the movie Love Simon is showing people that do not silence it. It's bullying. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and she did tell the teacher, and that's how I found out because she did tell tell. So. Well, one of the things, one of the things with me growing up, you know, hearing about this and hearing about, you know, um, the gay community and stuff like that, because we, you know, we were. We were boys, you know, we, we were out trying to get women, you know, and all my and that's the way all my friends were. And, you know, we we had these conversations like, you know, I think so and so may be, you know. But even then, um, one of the things I never understood is gay bashing. It's like, wait a minute, you're beating up somebody because you don't agree. With who, it's none of your business who they sleep with. No, yeah. they're not sleeping with anybody. And that's on both sides. 
long as they don't sleep with anybody underage, anything like that. Uh, Denzel, you kind of been co- kind of quiet. What's your take on all this? Um, yeah. Um, I. It's been the same way. Like it was very like quiet, but like. Even when I was in high school, it wasn't. Now, you went to a different high school than your sisters. You went to a very quiet school because you went in rural and she went in city, right? Exactly. It, like, it wasn't it wasn't showcase bullying, but I could see, like, a couple of, like, people that I wish I could go back in time. I could have been friends with who were outcasts pretty much because... Like, they had their still friends, but, like, they were pretty much outcasted because it was a small school, but it what? still was. I I pretty much had to stay quiet at the time because at the time, all I knew was that I was at least bisexual myself. Now, what do you refer yourself as? Myself, um, in the LGBTQ, I, refer, I am... Um, for my sexuality, I am polysexual, which means that I have a preference to women, but any gender I do find very attractive, ultimately. But for my gender, which is something that my most of my siblings don't have to deal with, is that I'm demisexual, which means that I'm non-binary sometimes, as well as being male. So, now, for people that are just listening to this and don't understand the community, what does that mean? Basically, um, there are people feel there's three genders. Like you are born with either being male or female, but your mind does not always agree with what your body is. There is non-binary, which is they don't identify as either male or female. There's male, obviously, and there's female, obviously. Okay. Yeah, because when I've been signing up for social media, trying to get the podcast out there, I'm noticing now, you know, it's like, are you female? Are you male? Are you no, whatever you want? <laughs> I would have to say, because I've... I've uh, tried... I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just male. Okay. <laughs> I've tried checking that box on the like internet to see what would happen. And sometimes if I've, like, I've noticed that the box doesn't work. And I can't remember on, like, what websites it didn't work, but it didn't sure. work. So it was yeah. really offensive. Well, that's sad that you've had that experience. With me, when I've in- clicked that box, because I don't want Infusion to be in- considered anyone, because me and Chris are doing this in- as co-host, you know. Yeah. Um, it's asked a little further questions of how do you actually refer yourself as, are you a they? Are you a are? Are you a them? You know, how do you refer to yourself as? Yeah. Well, see, one, of, one of the things, one of the things I've been, and one of the things I like to, I like to tell people is that we, and 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 being um, African American and being in a you know biracial relationship, one of the things that's always happened to me. Um, I'm going to tell you a story. Back when I was in high school, there was a kid. Um, I'm not going to say his full name, but his name was John. He wasn't gay or anything like that, but he kind of dressed different than everybody else. And everybody talked about, man, he wears this, he's wears this. He's actually a um, nice guy. Um, from He was uh, from Sweden, had family in Sweden, stuff like that. So everybody kind of made fun of the kid. And I was like, and um, I had a study hall with him and I was talking to him. I'm like, what kind of music do you listen to Sweden? Turned out he was a big reggae fan. And we talked, we had this long conversation about reggae. And it hit me there is that, we always like to put down what we don't understand, and we we um and and that's with um Ellie coming on the show. You know, I don't know anything about transit, but having it on and having having her on and having these conversations, and when you talk to people and you get to understand people, you get to think, okay, this is what they're about. Like I I was at the gym and there was an Asian guy there, and he um we worked out together, and he tattooed Madonna on his arm, and you know the bars he was going to, I'm like, you know, those are gay bars. You know, he's like, well, I got to tell you something. I'm like, I, I think I know. He goes, what? I go, you're gay. You know, and he, and he said to me a few weeks later, he goes, you know what I like about you? You don't care. It's like, but what I found was that they all want the same thing. We all want the same thing. We all want this significant other. We all want to, um, you know, like straight people. We want a woman who don't drive them crazy. Rage. <laughs> no. <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, you know, we're, we're all look, we're all looking for that soulmate, but. It's okay to love who you love, and as parents, we gotta we gotta accept this, and we gotta look at this um, and go, okay, hey, our kids are our kids are bisexual, but but how do we how do we move forward with this? Because this is something I've never dealt with, you know, as as a as a parent, but I accept it, and I don't want them out, you know, thinking they gotta be away from me or run away, you know, beyond, you know, and and that's what happens to a lot of them when I they. 
they leave their family and they, they end up dead or they end up uh, hurting for people not accepting. Go ahead, Zoe. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sorry. No, that's fine. Um, but Denzel's like not bi. Like he is not bi. He's what again? I'm polysexual. Yeah. It is part of. It's one of the umbrella um heads underneath bisexual because bisexual and transsexual, um transgender both have their um umbrella underneath. Yeah. But also, not to say that everyone wants a significant other, because there are asexual people who don't look for, like, a relationship, or they do, right? Um, explain it more. Okay, asexual just means that, uh, ultimately, that they just don't feel any sexual attraction to anybody. So, what that doesn't mean that, romantically, they don't want a partner. Oh. It just means that, sexually, they don't find anyone attractive, so that you actually just need to talk to somebody, and that's... That also has some uh, umbrella ones, which is called demisexual, which means as times goes on, they and they get to know the person, they might find it, them sexually attractive. It's just a matter of time for them. But what I what I found out on stuff I've seen on, on asexual is that a lot of them um, have lower testosterone than mo- than other men or other females have low, t- and that's what makes them not interested in either sex because they just they produce lower tes- lower testosterone than the average person. But not always in asexual. Some people um, have been hurt and um, seeing other relationships fail. It, you know, you got to know, um, you got to know yourself enough to know why you are doing, why you are who you are so that you can um, be your own self advocate, even in um Choosing what you want to be and the LGBTQ, um, even straight community. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing. And that's what I was saying, too. I mean, you can any any idiot can go and put somebody down because of who they are. But have you have you ever even tried to talk to the person? Have you ever, you know, um, where I work at, there's a um, there's a teacher. Um, again, I can't, I can't say his name, but, you know, he. He, he's um he's gay and we talk about he he actually has kids i think he was one that you know married did the straight thing and found out you know but anyways we you know he um turns out we were part of the same music scenes back back in the 80s and we talk music all the time you know knows a lot of music and great guy you know nice nice guy you know but that's the thing when you when you actually talk to somebody you actually get to know this person these people are no different from us it's just when this person goes home he goes home to a guy you go home to a woman or two or th- no i'm kidding i'm kidding well, well, I mean, um, I'm sorry. I don't know this much about like the LGBTQ community, but and I totally forgot the name. But there are people who what do you, like um, people who date multiple people or oh, sure. that's outside of the LGBT. That is, so, yeah, that is um, um, po- uh, poly- polygamy. That's what I was looking for. I that's, that's, that's polygamy is when you're married to two women at the same time. Are you married to multiple multiple women or men or men or, or men? Yeah. It, yeah, it's actually funny enough. It is illegal in the United States to be married to multiple. So polygamy in the United States is very much illegal. Well, it's not necessary. Well, yes, it's illegal, but people are still doing it, especially in Salt yeah. Lake, which we were in a couple of years ago. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you will find shows like that yeah. on the TV. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, I, I, I try, I tried to be polygamy, but I couldn't take the pain. Uh, Rachel kicking my ass every day, and uh, <laughs> I would definitely, yeah, 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 I, definitely I, like, yeah I, I, I can't take this no more. Nope, yeah, I, I, better nope, just, nope. I better just stick to one. I would kick your butt. I kick her butt, and I'd kick everybody else's butt that's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and while you're kicking everybody's butt, you think I'm gonna be there? <laughs> <laughs> you better run for your life. <laughs> run, 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 run. Good run. Run. <laughs> and, and that's, but that's the thing. That's the thing about polygamy too. Is like a bunch of a bunch of women all arguing at the same time and you're the only dude there's like not the party I want to be at okay you got a cup <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly I, would, I wouldn't drink I wouldn't drink anything with me, me day. <laughs> so po- so Polly would be polygamy would be not included it's just that's how how you feel like you're you're able to express the most amount of love so Polly is so you guys, as you can see, that's, a, you know, we've been extremely open with our children, with our education, but that's where you guys need to be too. You need to have that open communication and education with your children. Yeah. Educate, educate, like she's like, 
Rich just said, educate with your children, but educate yourself. Know about it, you know. So don't be close minded. Have, have those conversations. Because I think statistically speaking, um, one out of every five family may have a kid who's uh, gay or bisexual or whatever. So, you know, be be accepting, of, be accepting of who who the person is or who your kid is. And, um, you know, you just got to take it one step at a time. I know it's hard. You know, trust me. I know it's hard. There's a saying um, you never know what your words could do to somebody else so love as much as you can another thing that you guys do that i find is so amazing i hope that as a um a future father in the future um that i can bring that it's a love for knowledge that's something that you have pushed into all of your kids is to not just listen to you guys but to search out our own knowledges for our own selves to better ourselves but i do i mean i feel like you you could like enlighten us more, but I also feel like we could also enlighten ourselves more. Yeah, you know, because like there's some things that I still don't know. Um, but, yeah, but, but I mean, but, you but guys we, do we try. Don't, we don't know either. Yeah, yeah. I know, I yeah. know. But, and like you're 17, you're young. No, that's why I said <laughs> no, yes. no, exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it, you're 17. You're about to go into the gay 90s, like wake up eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talking about the gay 90s, I think we, sh- I think we should start with getting. You've never that. been there either, have you? I was. I'm a dick. I, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been in there. I've been in there. Oh, have we now? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's just not. You, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Um, back in the day, um, me and my friend, fellow comedian, a, a friend of mine by the name of Ben, we used to go there and we used to um, we used to meet women. It was um, <laughs> let's just say uh, the pickings were very easy because a lot of the guys were were gay. So um. It's yeah, we, a good time, though, you know, um, and you'll see some- very, very, very powerful drinks. Um, a friend of mine, Fancy Ray, the one and only he he used to love. He loves drinking the gay 90s because back when he drank, he was like, man, they, the drinks are very strong here. <laughs> but know? it's it's a good time and it's a good experience. So, you know, and there's no hate there. Um, I've never once walked in there and not had a good time. What? Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that's that's true. But. I've walked in there and um, it, it's it was it's kind of been weird for me because it's like you walk in there and you kind of like um, you got to like you don't want to make eye contact with anybody because you're like in some. But then once I got used to going in there, I was like, OK, OK, yeah. And, and everybody pretty much knew that. Hey, he's straight, you know, like that. But and that's one of the things about being straight. Um, I got to say something for the straight people. A lot of people like, oh, you're straight. Oh, you're straight and getting on, you know. Oh, you're straight. You're straight. You, you know, I'm not ashamed of being straight. Okay, I don't. I respect who you like. I respect what you're into and all that. But you shouldn't have to come back at me for being straight. I'm straight. I'm happy to be straight. I like women. I'm. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. You know. And that's the same thing with on the other side too. Is that don't be ashamed of who you are. Absolutely if that's who you want to are, and that's and that's um that's the lifestyle you want to lead. Yeah. Then, you know. Don't be ashamed of it. And the, like, don't just feel like it's the straight side that's doing all the hatred. It's both sides. There, I literally am in a, currently in, in a relationship with a woman. If there are some LGBTQ people that are like, "Oh, if you're in a relationship with the opposite gender, why aren't you in a relationship with the same gender?" Mm-hmm. It's just, and that's mainly a target at by, by people. Well, and you people tell that person that's none of your business. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. pretty much what you have to say. Exactly. Exactly. But not, but not only that. With Rach, um, your your sister's married. Your sister's married to a, a new. I call them sister sister, and um, <laughs> they got four kids now. You know. Yeah, I think that's another thing that's um, recently started being accepted that they have families and people aren't being as hateful against that. And I think that that's loving too. And um, psychologically speaking, there hasn't been any long term effects or any. Um, any long-term effects, psychologically speaking, on kids that have been raised by uh, same-sex marriages. Um, the data isn't out yet. I'm not. From what I understand, last I know, they don't have enough. It hasn't been long enough that it's that this has been going on. There hasn't been. Uh, they haven't been enough data collected to find out if it affects the kid. But so far, they haven't found any long-term effects on kids who were raised by same-sex same-sex relationships. But my take on that is, if you are grown in a loving house, it doesn't matter who your parents are. Yeah. But- I think what you say is uh, love over nature, nurture, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, love. And love, love unconditionally. What, 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 what's, a, what's a loving house? 
Well, it, it needs to be stable. It has to be. The, the kids need to know that they can come to you and be cared for and educated and over anything. What's a stable house? <laughs> you need to stop. Oh no, no, it's, it's, it's one of the things. It's like, okay, okay, me growing up, I mean, there was good times, there was bad times. But then I look at my, you know, you think, oh my God, my, I got it rough. Then you look at another friend who's like, he has it worse than you. And, you, and then when you get older, you find out. He's doing this. You're doing this, and you find out one thing. He's like, you know what? We're all messed up. <laughs> Nobody true. had the perfect childhood. You true, know, very true. <laughs> but if you can come to your parents, know you're, that you're still loved. Yeah, good. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Who cares if your mom is? Mm, I mean, you got a mom, mom, dad, dad. Yeah. <laughs> like who cares? Well, well, interesting story about that is it was like one time I was like uh, 20, 25, 26 or something like that, and. I remember I was just like, I didn't know what to do with my life. I didn't know what's going on. I was like, okay, let me go, let me go to my, my dad's office and talk to him. So I went to my dad's office and we went into the, um, we went into his office, closed the door and we talked and I was just like, I know what he's going to say, blah, 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 the same old crap. And we actually sat there, had a great conversation. He said, this is what you need to do. This is what you need. This is where you're at. This is what you need to do. This is what to, you got this. You got this. And I actually walked out there and said, Hey, you know what? I was so glad I did that. You know? Right? I was so, so glad I did that. Because, you know, as a young, young 20 something, you know, you're a hothead and all that. And you're thinking, yeah, mm, he's going to say, you know, but when, when you, when it happened, I was just like, man, that was, that was a great meeting. I was, I was so, so glad I had it. And it did put me, he didn't just say the stuff I, I thought he was going to say, you know, he actually, we actually sat down and we actually talked and it turned out to be a good thing, you know? Well, you guys, I, we, we went six minutes over our mm, time that we were going to i want to thank uh denzel and zoe for coming and you guys um in two days we got ellie so thank you for joining this podcast and chris you can close it up all right thanks a lot for joining us for infusion the podcast also too um if you want to check us out you want to see some of our um interview some of the interviews we um some of the interviews we've done we we had, uh, a few weeks ago we interviewed a lady um uh, Bridget, Bridget Penner. She'll um, be on there n- t- next week. Next week, next week. So check out our YouTube channel. You can check out our YouTube channel. It's Infusion Health at YouTube. What what is it at our YouTube channel, Rach? Love Infusion Health at Gmail dot com. Love Infusion Health at Gmail dot com. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us for Infusion the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, aka Superman Palmer, and my host and significant other, Rach. Hey, see you guys. See ya.